when did this love for food and appreciation for food start? It started around 2009. Um, we are, um, my husband and I are parents to two special needs kids. And we quickly realized that, um, there's a stat 80% of, of marriages of parents of special needs kids Mm -hmm. end up in divorce. Um, it's very, very stressful. And so we started at some point prioritizing date night. Sure. Um, and just that time away, whether it's travel, and we are blessed that we are able to find babysitting and stuff like that. So we've always dined, but we never really like paid attention. I mean, we've been together a very long time, right? Together thirty years, right? <laughs> um, and then one, just one day, it switched, and we started paying close attention, and we started enjoying wine and dining, and we started prioritizing that, mm-hmm. and then it turned to people asking us for recommendations. Mm -hmm. I was already writing on the parenting beat about my experiences as a special needs parent. Mm -hmm. Um, And at some point I said, well, what's another blog? Mm -hmm. Let's just add a new one and let's just move on from, not move on, I did it for a while side by side. Let's talk about food and let's talk about where I'm going and let's just write about my experiences. Okay. Man, it's a slow intro. Steady music coming in, you know? It really makes you want to move your shoulders, you know? Welcome (laughs) to a brand new episode of Pan Con Podcast. I am the producer formerly known as Nick Jimenez, and I am joined by 8th grade basketball MVP, two-time chili cook-off champion yep and alleged chef michael beltran mm-hmm. that's right entre comillas <laughs> great we alleged. are we are joined by very special guest brenda pobrikian yeah who you might know i guess not as the wet pal but as the the face the voice the writer of the wet palette miami's i'm i will call it miami's premier fine dining blog slash podcast Mm -hmm. i think that's pretty fair to say fair um just by way of introduction for those who are unfamiliar uh brenda aside from being a uh supporter of pancom podcast a multiple time pancom podcast dinner guest yep has enjoyed other dining experiences including what is it up to like 240 something stars cumulatively of among the 248 248 and how many of the top 50 list people 14. 14, I think, yeah. Yeah, I was looking at the, the Instagram the bio stats. on the way over here. I just here. added that. So, uh... Got to be careful with Nick. He pays yeah, attention. He's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on top of stuff. I, I like did. Two days ago, I had it. I like how you got to be careful with Nick because he might do research at a red light <laughs> on the way to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the Wet Palette is a blog. It's a podcast. There are reviews uh, of many, many restaurants. I think a lot of people appreciate the uh, the honesty of those reviews and also sometimes on the podcast she is joined by larry aka the hubs to people who know him the gallery today yeah he's the peanut gallery today so uh and he is the uh the the producer slash (laughs) slash wine guy he's the he's he's the chief wine correspondent also the the, the, uh, uh, very real perspective on things right yeah he brings the heat yeah so just to give people a little bit of an idea i was uh I listened to the, the, we're recording this November 15th. I listened to the, the episode that you published earlier today. Uh, and on that episode, there are uh, brief, but more substantive than people are used to in the social media age reviews uh, of a bunch of places. I will rattle them off just so people get a sense of yeah, like it was a lot. what this, this looks is like. This the most we've done in one. Yeah, it's a lot. It's uh, Uchi, Los Felix, Mila, Biblos. Uh, I guess you skipped number 80 for some reason. Oh, I, I just, uh, I, that you was just a mis- misnumbered them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lamar QP Tapas 2.0, <laughs> which is the pop up over at the allocation room. Mm-hmm. Marquis Caviar Lounge, Hidden, Chica, The Den, Bouchon, and Rocky Sushi. So yeah. just to give people a sense of like what the focus is, if you're totally unfamiliar. Um, anyway, that's where I step all the way out and let Mike Thank take God. the wheel here. Um, I know. I know. Yeah. I have to say, I think. Brenda, I think the both of you guys have been probably like one of maybe 10, group of maybe 10 that have been our regulars for, it's been almost eight years. Wow. Yeah. I think that like, um, 
And not just the area, like pretty much all of them. You guys have at least gone. Have you gone to all of them? I haven't done Eva yet. Well, it's new. Right. I mean, it's like two weeks old, so that doesn't count. But, you know, the appreciation for myself and my staff is intense, just so so you guys both know that. We both appreciate, like, how much, not only um, how much you guys frequent, but, like, your very uh, real kind of, like, take on things. Um you know, we trust your opinion a lot. Uh, and, you know, everyone has an opinion, but if someone comes one time and they have an opinion, it, it is what it is. But if someone comes, I don't know, hundreds of times, I know it's not quite been that many, but still, we really appreciate the uh, the amount of support that you guys have given us over the last eight That's years. It's weird pleasure. to say. Yeah, eight years is a long time. Yeah. I I need to ask, when... And why did the whole like food thing start and happen for you? I mean, 248 stars. Yeah. That's a lot. I think I've been to like 20 in my whole life. Well, it's not 248 restaurants, 248. No, stars. stars. No, yeah, I know. Well, actually, tonight it will be 249. Yeah, 249. Yeah. <laughs> it's still a lot. Like, when did yeah. this, when did this love for food and appreciation for food start? It started around 2009. Um, we are, um, my husband and I are parents to two special needs kids and we quickly realized that, um, there's a stat 80% of, of marriages of parents of special needs kids Mm -hmm. end up in divorce. Um, it's very, very stressful. And so we started at some point prioritizing date night. Sure. Um, and just that time away, whether it's travel, then we are blessed that we're able to find babysitting and stuff like that. So we've always dined, but we never really like hate attention. I mean, we've been together a very long time. Right. We've been together 30 years. Right. <laughs> um, and then one, just one day it switched and we started paying close attention and we started enjoying wine and dining and we started prioritizing that. Mm-hmm. And then it turned to people asking us for recommendations. Mm -hmm. I was already writing on the parenting beat about my experiences as a special needs parent. Mm -hmm. Um, And at some point I said, well, what's another blog? Mm -hmm. Let's just add a new one and let's just move on from, not move on, I did it for a while side by side. Let's talk about food and let's talk about where I'm going and let's just write about my experiences. And back then, this is around, we started 2013. I started 13. You really didn't have Instagram. And right. You had a little bit of Twitter, food Twitter. Miami food Twitter was very interesting back then. Mm-hmm. Um, and Twitter is still a very interesting it's place. It's still interesting. but I, I love it there, but it's very interesting. It was a, a more, I guess, a smaller community, but it was, it was just interesting, the takes, and people did meetups, and it was stuff that doesn't really happen now. Right. And you only really had Yelp for crowdsourcing and then blogs. People had blogs and you talked about food and reviews and that kind of stuff. And that's kind of where it all started. This episode of Pan Con Podcast is brought to you by Perla Specialty Roasters. Perla produces an award-winning coffee portfolio. They are a four-time Good Food Award finalist and two-time winner. Perla uses coffee directly sourced from around the world using relationships on the farm level. They view their coffee portfolio as a way for coffee partners like Ariad Hospitality Group to further enhance their guest experience. I really love what their brand represents from a local standpoint. They're uh, very immersed in the community and they've been very supportive uh, of all of our places even before we used to serve Perla. So... Uh, when we decided to partner with them and make them our coffee provider across the board, they've been great to work with. And with such intention placed on the food and bar program, shouldn't your restaurant have the same attention to detail? Their espresso fino blend was specifically designed to pair great with milk, making it amazing for latte or cortadito. Perla's biggest competition is the large, soulless, multinational roasting operations. You like that soulless? It's so good. It's like the final boss. <laughs> <laughs> you have to beat the soulless, the big multinational fucking Folgers roasting, monster or something. <laughs> roasting operations. It's like a Maxwell House <laughs> thing walking up to you. It's good. 
They can also solve equipment needs with sales, leasing, and service operations available at their disposal. With lightning fast order fulfillment, orders roast and ship the same day. Sometimes Chug's Diner gets its order the same day the coffee was roasted. I can uh, 100% say that that's actually happened more than once from a customer standpoint, customer service standpoint. They're pretty incredible to work with for sure. With initial and ongoing staff training to make sure that their coffee is tasting on point. Yeah, I think there's two points there that are incredibly true just because I've lived them. It's like the when it comes to equipment issues, uh, how willing they are to help us in the maintenance uh, standpoint of, of equipment because coffee equipment, unless you are you have years and years of knowledge, you have no idea how to even start. And then the ongoing staff training, uh, you know, it's something that they talk about with us several times, whether they want to come in and do training us on how to make the coffee or just education on the coffee. Um, they're really, they've been really great. To get all of your coffee situation on point, drinkperla.com. That's drink, P-E-R-L-A.com, drinkperla.com to get your coffee situation on point and move away from those soulless operations. Maxwell House, big boss. do 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 and was there like one food experience that you were like this was amazing i need to write about it well my first fine dining experience that that changed for me was le cirque 2009 i think it was or 08 i didn't know fine dining in that way um everything Mm -hmm. about that dinner for me was shocking right um the service the hospitality little things like bringing a purse holder up one of those little hangers right 2008 2009 seemed what and then the food and just bringing out the food and them talking to me about the food individually well served simultaneously and just everything that went with that i just left in shock right where's why don't we have this in miami yeah you know um and then I, in Miami, no. I mean, writing about it, I think my first write-up was about strip mall gems. I think it was my first ever post. Love that. And it was just little great places to... See? We we're talking about casual fine dining. Right. But places where you could actually get a very beautiful experience, even if you have a Dollar Tree and a Winn-Dixie on, the, you yeah. know, <laughs> on either side of it. That's pretty... I mean, it's common in a lot of other big cities to be able to do stuff like that. I mean, L.A., what Ludo was doing in a small strip mall, you know, I thought was like pretty cool. In Miami, I I, I think that there's gems, not exactly like nicer dining, but you know, I find, I mean, Jamaican Kitchen still one of my favorite places to eat at. It's in the strip mall. So next to a Winn-Dixie that I used to work at when I was a kid. Ah. But um, I, th- I, I find it interesting because there's not that, there's not an incredible amount of people that, are willing to write about food that love food, you know, for them, it's just like kind of almost a hobby that they really enjoy. Um, Taking it to the next step of talking about it and writing about it is, I mean, it's a big next step because we don't really have a ton of food writing in the city. And I think from 2010 to now, it's less now than it was then. 100%. And not only writing about it, I wanted to write about it in an honest way. Sure. And part of that was being responsible for choosing where I'm dining, paying for what I'm, where I'm dining, and then writing about it from my perspective. Right. And the people I have found who are, I have kind of like a little bit of a cult following in the sense that people find me, whether it's on Instagram, on Twitter, because I'm on all the things. All the <laughs> TikTok, things. I'm on all the things. We have a song for that. I know all yeah. the things. Yeah. Thank you, Noah. <laughs> um, we, I wanted to be honest about it and I can only do that if I am responsible for paying for it, mm-hmm. choosing it. I'm the one photographing it. I do whatever I want. So people that align with me or people that find, they find my page and they find that a lot of either my recommendations or they're similar to theirs and they kind of stick around. Sure. And there's like a whole fast forward to today, like Instagram, for example, I have a whole group of people that I am friends with that have now turned into real life friends just because we connect mm-hmm. with food. We've connected over food and we have the same likes and dislikes, sure. et cetera. 
I um, I'm intrigued from 2009 when you started like dining, dining to like now going into 2024. Uh, I'm sure you have felt and seen a lot of change. Yeah. In the city. Good, bad. Of course, good. Well, I mean, you never know. No. Some, some, I mean, yeah. I, there is a lot of bad too, but there is a lot of good. Yeah, but I. Okay. What would you say is bad? I mean, you know what I think. Is I know, bad. right? I, mean, I know. Big, big box restaurants <laughs> right. that. Uh, it's the same thing as like on the last pod that we talked about with uh, Friedman. It's like, yes. you know, are you paying for? Is this what you're paying for? The right. tables, the chairs, the lights, the right, the huge shitty music, right. the. Uh, the tiki tiki. You know, you douchey ba- bouncer at the door. Yeah. Uh, are you paying for the dress code? I don't fucking know. I mean, it's like, okay, there it like is. Like five seconds late. Nick. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> fine. Um, are you paying for that or are you paying for like quality food? I think from a quality food standpoint, Miami has, has had a lot of quality food over the years. I think now there's more than there has been. Yeah. Um, and that's the good part. I think with the bad part, now there's just a lot more things here than there was previously, I think. Yeah, I agree. And But I think also, I think we're going more towards like a Vegas kind of vibe when it comes to those restaurants. Mm-hmm. The big, what I call the tiki tiki places. The, I mean, there's a Hell's Kitchen here now. Know. Yeah, I haven't been. No, Keep I mean, getting, I'm not going to go. I was checking out their Beef Wellington on, online. Did yeah. you look at, did you see the pictures? No, I didn't. I was, I was Does like, it look hmm. good? <laughs> I don't. I don't think the dough looks good, but yeah. everyone says you have to go try it. So, I don't know. I don't. I think it's one of those. I'll wait for someone to say, "Hey, it's my," which is usually the case. It's my birthday. This is where we're going, so I have no choice. Well, how many of these of big those. box restaurants have you been to that you actually thought were good? Oh, this answer is going to shock you. Sure. I actually liked Sexy Fish. Oh, I know. Awful. We have a secret plan, Nick and I. Oh yeah. <laughs> is there a secret plan? Yeah. What's the secret plan? No, we can't tell you. We can't tell. We can't tell everyone. No. All the twenty-one people tell. that listen to this. We can't no, tell the twenty-two. Really, you're the only person we can't tell. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I love that. It's a for plan. It's for nobody. <laughs> it yeah. will happen at some point. Anyway, I don't know. Uh, back to that answer. So I went. Oh, I was gonna hate it. I and Larry kept saying, "You want to hate it so bad." I just sat there, and did Larry hate it? Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think he hated it. Oh, wow. I know. we, But, but he was laughing at me because I kind of went in a little bit kicking and screaming up to it. Again, one of those celebration type places. And what happened was after you have to decompress when you enter, right? Because it's <laughs> <laughs> you need like 10 <laughs> minutes to decompress just looking around like what the hell is happening? <laughs> right. It's. I mean, just from there's pictures, it octopus, looks like a octopus, there's glitter all over and... And then the the girls and, and the just every, bathroom, everything. But then I started to appreciate. Yes, I started to appreciate the little details mm-hmm. because there is no detail that went on. Look, so whereas I'm not gonna get into names, but local big restaurant groups, right? And they just like put all this money, like you say, into these restaurants. This sure. London group from Sexy Fish. They thought, or someone in their management team, whoever was responsible, thought about every little thing down to the chopsticks holders that you turn around because everyone wants to steal them, and the bottom says stolen at Sexy Fish. I mean, the amount of detail I appreciated so much before we even had the food, right? Mm-hmm. I appreciated. Then I started paying attention where my napkin fell because I had a satiny kind of dress, and someone rushed over to pick it up for me, and I'm thinking, okay. Why is this happening at Sexy Fish? That kind of service? At least when I went in the beginning, I haven't been back. I hear it maybe not like that now. I don't know. So that was my experience. Sure. Service was on point. Every little thing, the dishes, the glass, it was thought through, Mm -hmm. right? The right spoons, the right knives, every little thing. And then the food came. I'm taking the bite and Larry's looking at me like, you want to effing hate it. And I'm like, I do. But I like it. And every little thing that they brought, for the most part, we like most of the dishes. So if you're going to go somewhere for a celebration and that's where you're going to invite me, invite me there. (laughs) You know? Interesting. Skip. So that was my experience there. And then I did, um, it was also very early. Mm -hmm. I I lie. I went a second time. And it was, we were gone by like 930. So we didn't get the whole like shit show part. Yeah. The second time. The pachanga part. The pachanga. Yeah. 
slash shit show. Right. <laughs> it was, can I curse on this thing? Of course, what? right? Hello, I know. I, I know what you're saying. Ooh, first time listener over here. No, I'm not. I don't know <laughs> what I was thinking. I'm, yeah. Um, second time, it was a nine o'clock dinner. And I'm thinking, oh, this is it. This is going to be the one that just forget it. What I found was it was a contained chaos. It wasn't, you didn't have like patasucias and you didn't have like, like Miami ghetto, like stuff going on. I mean, you did, you had like the 80 year old man with the 12 year, well not 12 year old, like 18 year old girls, but you know, that kind of stuff. But the dancing was kind of contained. There were men in suits at pretty much every corner, um, making sure that the chaos was not too ratchet. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so it was, again, it was contained. So I was expecting ta- it to taste, be really tasteful pachanga. Tasteful pachanga. I love that. Yes. Tasteful so, pachanga. I mean, after, like I said, you have to decompress because when you sit, when you enter, you're like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> yeah, tasteful pachanga. Tasteful pachanga. Un- understated chumaria. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> love good. that. Yeah. No pata sucias allowed. <laughs> I, um, you know, and, and, uh, and not speaking poorly of their restaurant because I, I do enjoy it a lot, but like, coat, when I go there, I need to decompress when I leave. Uh, I do love coat. Yeah, I think the food's great. Um, I just it is loud. It's just loud, yeah. and it's like, and me that someone that loves a dark dining room, it's like so dark and so loud. I remember I went there. It's probably been over a year now. With Zach Jose, you haven't been there in a year. No, I got up. You don't dine out a lot. No, um, when I do, it's like strip mall places, usually. Strip mall gems. Yeah. Tropical Chinese. Um, And it was just like a lot, man. It was just a lot happening. A lot of people. Smoky was loud. I was like, I'm going to go take a seat outside. It's just a lot happening for me. You know, that's even a lot for me. So I could only imagine if I ever walked into Sexy Fish, it's like going to be like sensory overload. It will be. Too much. Now, is it a place that I'm going to choose to go on my Saturday, my precious Saturday night? No, never. So how did you like Bouchon? I didn't. You didn't? Why? Um, I don't well, know. let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you like Bouchon? Do you like Bouchon? Yonville? I don't. You don't like Yonville? I don't like no. Oh, see, I love Yonville. No, I love Yonville. Oh, I don't love saying. Bouchon Yonville. I love everything about. Okay, no, I'm talking Yonville. about the Bouchon and Yonville. You don't enjoy. I do not. Oh well, I mean, it's going to be hard to enjoy this one if you don't enjoy that one. Maybe. I mean, again, I, I have so. friends who are. They swear that I just. I mean, I did go a little safe. I wasn't really there for. It just happened to be. At Bushana was meeting a girlfriend I haven't seen in about five years. Mm-hmm. It was all about that meeting. And she said, hey, I snagged a reservation at Bushan. Do you want to come? And I had already canceled. Actually, twice I um, changed that reservation because I was eh, getting cold feet about it. So I said, okay, let's do it. And then we just went with, like, the steak frites, the foie gras, the creme brulee, and mm-hmm. um, the mussels. Everything was just underwhelming for mm-hmm. me. Interesting. A gorgeous place. Yeah, gorgeous. I mean, I personally like build out wise. I enjoy the one in Yachtville more. <coughs> I love the energy of the one in Yachtville. Like, I thought it was like pretty electric for the kind of restaurant that it is. I thought the food was solid. Um, I enjoyed it. I would go back. You know, I mean, on that trip, we ate at the Laundry, Bouchon, Press. Press. Um, Pre Star Press. I mean, uh, like, I all all the meals were great. Press was amazing, and obviously, the Laundry was long. I do love. So, you know, I mean, like the food wasn't on the level of the other two, but like the experience was still great. So we enjoyed it a lot. I haven't been to the one here yet. I I can only imagine that it's going to be hard to replicate anything when it comes to like energy and vibe of a space from across the country. You know, I am a fan of everything else color wise. You know, Bouchon. Yeah, you enjoy the surf club. And I love the surf club. You know, I love surf club, too. And obviously French laundry. And I just did per se last week. I've actually never been there. I love it even more than French Laundry. That's what a lot of people say. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I haven't had the opportunity. And like, I told you last time I went to New York, I went to Brooklyn Fair, which I didn't enjoy. Um, yes. I didn't I didn't enjoy. <laughs> I know. And they didn't have the duck the day you went, unfortunately. You know, I mean, it's it's but, gone. You know, that whole thing's gone. The, so the restaurant is gone. So the restaurant's there, but Chef says that is no longer there. Right, I know. He's, he's opening his own place, and they brought back two chefs from that used to work there. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to like do the thing. They're never going to get back to three stars. They're never. I I don't think so either. And you know what? The the first thing they did was on friends and family night. They invited this influencer slash 
Instagram personality guy. Cool. And I'm thinking, you know who would have never done that? Say that. <laughs> would yeah, have never I'm done sure that. he wouldn't have. Yeah. <laughs> and that right there tells you everything you need to know about the management going in as far as, you know, trying to get that back. Well, it's like, a sad. I mean, that? it doesn't matter if I didn't enjoy it. A lot of people have enjoyed it. and A yeah. lot of people you, love it. From your experience, what you told me was completely. First of all, the doc wasn't even there. Which yeah, is the I mean, it's, I wanted it's you to also go. just like I told you, like when I when I eat, I don't really drink. And, and it, as soon as that happened, they, they were just totally turned off. And like, that's not a good representation of hospitality or service in my mind. Yeah, it's kind of weird. So like, you know, was the food solid? Like, yeah, it was solid. But like, I would go to Francie a hundred times over going back there <coughs> and pay a fraction of the price. So it's like, I also think Francie is an exceptional restaurant, in my opinion. Um, cause I just, I went to them like two days apart from each other. So it's, that's why it's like the easy comparison for me. Um, yeah, that's such an interesting story. So speaking on the star stuff. So I remember, uh, we're what two, is it, it's not it's two, a year and a half removed the year and eight months, whatever from the, fir- from the first last summer. Yeah. Last summer. I mean, Talk about a time and like the um, the buildup leading up to that, because, you know, like you write a lot about stars and Michelin at that yeah. point. We had spoken about this like several times in the year previous for years. Yeah. I mean, I think in the year previous to them, like actually announcing that they were going to come to Miami, we had talked about it a lot. And, um, you know, I told you my personal feelings were like, of course, this is something that we want and this is something that we we believe that. We want to be a part of. We didn't know if it was going to happen. You were dead set that that, that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure. Yes, um, I broke the news. Yeah. As you did break the news. <laughs> you did break the news before all the other publications. Um, but you were there on June 9th. Yes. Yeah. It was pretty amazing. It was incredible. The first time. The first time. <laughs> the first time. <laughs> the second time, not so amazing. No. The first time. I mean, it was still amazing to continue to retain but just the experience wasn't the same that experience was just small right which i wanted it to be bigger are you talking about the first one the first one one. i wanted it to be bigger you know thing going in going back like why is this so small why are we in a tent in the middle of a nice hotel we're at the ritz why aren't we in a bank you know in one of the event rooms and looking back though it was just right it was perfect Pretty perfect, and the camaraderie and the emotions, the nerves. Yeah, yeah, they were bad. I was super hammered. I, I was. I had drank so much. I had drank I from like eleven o'clock to when that thing started, and then drank more after. It was the anxiety was like painstaking. It was awful, but it was great. It was also like a great day. Something I didn't know as much as I've always written about. I started writing about Miami's <laughs> potential in two thousand fourteen. <laughs> mm-hmm. And something, for whatever reason, escaped me until Ariette, is that they go in alphabetical order. I love that. For me, I loved it. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So they're talking and talking and talking. And now and soon we're going to tell you who the stars are. And they're just, oh, my God, just get on with it. Just talk. Just say who it is. Then there's like this weird, I felt it was like this 10 second silence in the room. And everyone's just staring at the screen. And it's like, Ariette. And if you, the proof is if you watch my raw video which mm-hmm. i still th- think i think i still have that on my instagram it's so annoying what the video because all i'm doing is screaming i'm going ah, oh my yeah God. I'm just screaming and, but it was the emotions of like and it was the first one area and it was like oh yeah and then you didn't show up for like eight minutes well <laughs> i mean i was in the back i know yeah i didn't even know there was chairs i wouldn't have sat in a chair though but like it was like uh it was uh I was in the far back and the um, actually Philip Franklin Lee uh, has a, a video of that, of when that happened. It was incredible. It was a wild feeling. It was a roller coaster of a day, roller coaster of a month, to be honest, um, you know, from personal struggles and like the uh, staff, you know, my team was like that. I've never seen them quite so stressed. They're way less stressed now. Um, But like back then they were like, it was high level stress. And, you know, like that kind of the team that we spread out around the company, they were all in one kitchen. 
and um, they like they were doing such an amazing job. So it was great for them uh, to like gain that kind of recognition because they definitely deserved it. It was just it was it almost feels like that day was fake, like it wasn't real. You know, and then you fast forward to the one that just pa- happened this past year. Not quite the same. More, a little more superficial. Yeah. A little I mean, more Miami. You just leave it to Miami <laughs> to, to do shit like that. But yeah. um, your staff watched it because I did the live feed. Yeah. And um, that was so cool, too. Why wouldn't they have? They didn't do a live feed. Well, they've they, done it they, for they, every other one. Oh, have they? They didn't do it for Miami that year. So oh. when I came back, I didn't realize just how many people have watched it on my feed. Right. And that was annoying because I'm holding the phone. I mean, it was, I don't know how long. I'm there holding that phone and sweat. My hands were sweating, but I, I needed to keep filming. Right. <laughs> it was so cool. And what were your thoughts after that day? Just as someone that was kind of like a champion of this should this should happen. Miami deserves this kind of recognition. Of course. Um, At some point, I turned my first several articles were kind of like well i don't know that we have that many restaurants that would qualify and then at some point i switched to like okay now we're ready mm-hmm. let's go like on 2018 2018 19 like right before covid mm-hmm. i was sure you know it was coming and after it finally happened first it was like oh this is for all of you especially a dedication who said Brenda, why do you care so much? Why do you write about it? You know Miami's never getting a guide. Right, right. This is for you. That was number one. And number two, no, I was just proud. Yeah. And proud that, you know, many of the my favorites that I've been supporting and, you know, hyping up for years and years did make the cut. A couple didn't. Yeah, they still didn't. Yeah, still a couple didn't. But, you know, that's the benefit of it happening every year, I guess. You know, it's also like the daunting test, so we have to keep it every year. And I don't mind that they... I want them to go slow. Sure. I don't want them to add 30 restaurants right off the bat. Right, which, I mean, they should. I mean, it's a big state, but also, like, density-wise, restaurant-wise, when you compare Orlando, Tampa to Miami, it's like, you know, there's much more stuff here than there is there. You know, Tampa had a good showing this last year, right? Um, I thought Orlando did pretty well also. Um they're kind of taking turns. Like they ignored Tampa last year, but now it's like all oh, Tampa. Well, all those restaurants were there last year too. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel mean, like the ceremony's probably in Tampa next year. I mean, I would guess. If because that's... again, you did. Everyone's paying, right? So Miami, right. Orlando, Tampa. Right. Makes sense. It kind of makes sense to me. Just what do you guess. What do you say to the Michelin naysayers? I mean, I don't care. <laughs> Anymore. I mean, but it's still a conversation. You know, like, they're still going to come at you about something. It is. The thing is that it's... it's like, what are you telling Carlos Frias? I don't talk to Carlos Frias. I know. I'm just saying, <laughs> but he's, he's like the number one Michelin naysayer. Yeah. Thankfully, he doesn't have that job anymore. And he's, yeah, he's relieved of yeah, his true. pain of having to talk about it. Um, what do I say to someone like that? It's kind of like, it's here. You know? When he heard about it, I think he, he was one of the ones that said it was the stupidest thing he had ever heard or something like that. Like, <laughs> that... that the rumor that the guide was coming and then look at that mm-hmm. it's here so i just to me is you know and as if you're if we're gonna go there as an editor i want someone to talk about tacos and i want someone to talk about fine dining i want someone to if you're going to lead a newspaper whoever that it goes for the entire city talk about it all mm-hmm. it's your job yeah right don't just you don't feel comfortable with that so then that's just when it comes to fine dining, let's just crap on it. Sure. You know, no, let's let's go all in. Well, I mean, people love to shit on fine dining, you know? but I think. But it's uh, not going anywhere. <clears throat> every I mean, every year, there's an article. Oh, this is the end of fine dining. Twenty years later, we're still waiting for the end of fine dining. You know. Not I going mean, anywhere. I think I think dining is changing. It is. But changing. I I do think that the space that fine dining lives within is not going to go anywhere anytime soon. If it does go anywhere at all, I mean, there's always going to be a group try and of find people. reservations. At any of those places. Right. I, I mean, I, I just think that in, in reality, it's one of those things that there's always going to be a group of people that wants to dine like that. You know, it's okay. not for everybody. And that's OK. And it you doesn't know? have to be. I, what I would always say to like the Michelin naysayers, like why? First of all. The fact that the state did something good for hospitality for once and like drew attention 
and marketing dollars and just like something that puts us in the world view. Why would you be mad at that? Let me remove myself emotionally about the fact that you're talking shit about something that we've been working for for a long time. Just as like a simple business owner, why would you speak poorly of that? Why does it make sense to say that this shit doesn't matter? Because it does matter. You know, like if we want to be taken serious as a tourist destination in general, I mean, dining needs to be on point. Like why a lot of people love to go to New York. What do they love to do in New York? They love to eat from everything from like small places to big places. It doesn't matter. They love to do that. So, I mean, in my mind, it only made all the sense in the world. Like Florida wants to be on the map as a tourist destination all the time for more things than just Disney World, you know, or just beautiful beaches. It needs to be much more than that. And dining is a serious component of what drives people to go anywhere. I know, I mean, whenever I go anywhere, it's usually 100% revolving around dining, but that's just because that's who I am. Same. But other people are like that. Same. So, I don't know, the uh, Michelin naysayer thing has always been a, I won't say a point of contention. I always find it pretty interesting because it's like, who are you mad at? Good. Thank you, yeah. Good. yeah. Jump in with a version of that question. Because what, one of the things that I find like really compelling about the wet palette is that you don't come from food. Right. Right? So, I guess it's a, it's a two-part question. Like, over that time that you've been doing this, how has your perception or understanding of fine dining changed? And then also, what have you learned about like how to get people to care? Right. Because that's really ultimately the damage that it does when there are people in those positions who don't care themselves is that then you lose somebody there helping other people understand why it matters. So what have you learned about like what connects with people? Because I imagine that that you can connect with people being not only from an outsider to, to the food world, right, but also like very Miami. Like you're not some transplant who showed up. You're like, you oh, know, yeah, yeah. Cuban, you're a Miami Dolphins uh, cheer alum. Like it, it's, hard, it's hard to get more Miami than Brenda. <laughs> uh, grew up in Hialeah. Grew up in Hialeah, exactly. <laughs> like, but, but for that reason, I, am, I, I think that you probably have a lot more insight than most people into like what it is that makes it click in people's heads of like why it should matter to them, even if they're not doing it all the time. Here's the thing that drives me insane. If you, it's just not having an open mind, right? So a lot of the statements, you know, even like just going on like Twitter or, or whatever, I, I kind of refuse to call it X, it's still Twitter to, to me. It's just going on and that's kind of like crowdsourcing, right? Like you see like people's opinion. A lot of the blanket statements that are made are, they stem from ignorance. Right. So they, they have an ex people that have not experienced it. And I'm not saying ignorance like in a condescending way. I'm just saying if you haven't experienced it, like I always say, if, if you're going to have an opinion, try it before you have an opinion about it. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I even scold myself, you know, I talk about something. I'm like, well, but I haven't really tried it. So I don't know. Right. So I think what I have. Gosh, I have a whole army of friends who were never into fine dining until my husband and I. Mm -hmm. And we were going on a trip and we said, well, do you mind if we put this restaurant in the rotation and and they all had an open mind and they all went with it and now they're all going to French Laundry sending me pictures without me like hey what happened That's great. <laughs> so but they haven't it's is it and listen I don't dine like this all the time mm -hmm. you know we eat plenty of whatever this is know. a topic I wanted to get into later <laughs> yeah mm. we eat everything it's just that on like we talked about a little earlier on our Friday and Saturday night dates this is where we choose to go so that we can have a nice bottle of wine and do fine dining. So to go back to your question, I just, I want people to have an open mind. It, no one, first of all, no one's saying it's for everybody, mm -hmm. right? But you don't have to shit on it just because you have never, never experienced it. Try it once, have an opinion, try it maybe again, different places, see the whole thing. Learn about the ingredients and why maybe that place is, I go into a whole deep dive. You heard my episode to, um, today about uni, right? Yeah, yeah. So find out why, why is it uni? Why is it expensive? Where, where does it come from? How is it graded? Like just little things, just learn about it. And mm -hmm. then you might see the experience is different. Oh, oh, those, those bites. I'm going to have to go get a burger after. No, you're not. You're having right. 24 of those bites plus supplements plus wine. Like there's no way I, we've never once gone to get a burger after have, has there been some that we're okay, just okay, satisfied, not full? Yeah. 
but do you have to be like full like gross full after every dinner like it's you just have a, and it's more than that with fine dining it's the entire experience which going into i do my annual as you know palette mm -hmm. awards mm -hmm. my criteria for that is the entire experience it's not a restaurant i always say it's not oh it's a dive and you could get the best but you can go and get the best whatever there or oh the owners are so great yeah the food's okay but we just want to go support because the owners are so great my awards are about everything right the whole the vibe and the experience the service obviously the food is number one mm -hmm. and a lot of those for the most part tend to be fine dining spots because they can provide everything the whole experience so that to me is what fine dining is just a random side question uh do you think michelin takes service into account unofficially yes <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the official statement is they don't right but i am calling bs on that yeah, I think that yeah. <clears throat> I would I would have to say that I think they do also. Yeah. So, like, what are the goals for you in this, like, uh, I guess, like, personal journey of, like, you know, food and being vocal about food? Like, what are some of your goals that you see for the wet palate in the next five years? Now that we've that have reached 10 years, I'm kind of at a crossroads where to go with it. Clearly, I love the writing part of it. I could get a lot more done with my podcast. Um, I could get more information out there. So I think my goal moving forward is to continue working on the podcast, make that grow. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, the review series, which has been with my husband and I, has been pretty popular. Um, yeah, I mean, he's pretty entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm honest. <laughs> he's beyond honest. And and so maybe turn that into maybe a series, some kind of cool. um TV, web, um, or web, what, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe turn, like, the further develop that. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe tape those episodes. I don't really, I don't currently record my episodes um, like you guys do in video. Something along those lines, but just continue out there, just championing um, the city, and, but also going a little strong if there's something that's off. Sure. You know, which we're not, you know, again, we, we pay for our meals, so it's, my experience and the restaurants that I chose <laughs> that were right. paid by us. Right. So I am free to talk about it if I want, and I do. Are there other uh, blogs that you find similar? So blogs have kind of gone extinct. Yeah, yeah. You know? For sure. Um, locally, not really. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I not think... For what I, what I, not for what I follow. I think the only other two blogs really are david rosendorf and oh, of course yeah uh, anything he says i follow you're right i mean that one yes yeah he's a badass he was just a previous guest on a podcast he's great, yes though. you're right i forgot that yes um, that. yeah he's he's great and in a different dynamic but still very much out there is burger beast of for course. sure i mean of course and that's the other angle right don't get mad at me for not writing about burgers right no one gets mad at burger beast for not writing about caviar so, why am I getting sure. shit for not writing about a burger? I you would know? love to see Burger Bees writing about caviar. <laughs> I actually would love that. That would be great. But you yeah. know what I mean? So it's it's kind of a little bit of a double stand and all. She only does fine dining. And your point is, then don't yeah. follow me. It's it's really easy. Unfollow. Right? Yeah. And I mean, you know, people are... He does they, what he does very well. He does I'm what he fan. does very well. He's, we actually have a we, we have a thing. I told him um, I love my burger at, um, at Laurel. Uh-huh. So he said, oh, I haven't tried that. So I said, okay. So oh, we need... man, he would hate that burger. He would? I think so. We so we talked about it. So he said he would go try it. If I go try, oh, he's going to kill me now. I don't remember the name. It was. Is it his pop-up or a... no? No, it's either a Burger King or I think McDonald's. <laughs> but he wants to take me to, <laughs> he wants to take me to the original. Okay, don't kill me. I have to look at our notes or whatever he said. It was the, uh, but the original, which I'm thinking it's in a shady neighborhood. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not scared. Let's do it. How fun would that be? Oh, That's man. so that we've been talking about that. So doing a whole day where we do that and then we do Laurel's. Oh, man. A, a little Burger I'm Beast. Very palette. into this. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> Collaboration. I'm stressed. He's going to hate that burger. Why? It's, oh, because I, I was going on and on and on about I mean, it online. It's, and it's <laughs> still, I think it's delicious. But it's awesome. Yeah, it is. Suppose if they said, it's a fork and knife burger, and I'm here like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Eating it with my hands. Actually, the other burger we do is also really good. It's not on that menu, though. But um, Barry's Burger that we serve at the cigar bar next door. Oh, okay. It's also that. really good. Just more like 
traditional burger vibe. That would be that, more more his speed. That one I feel like is more, much more his speed. I mean, it's fucking delicious. He said it looked good. It does look good. I mean, it is good. It's okay. like, the but ri- he, he was willing to try it though. Yeah, no, I'm down. I'm down. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stressed, Him and uh, Food for Thought. You're right. Those are yeah. I do follow. I don't really know any other ones to be honest. I just tend to follow the restaurant beat, the actual chefs, and that's kind of like I get all my intel, you know. And then I do have a group of like-minded individuals on. Do you follow Instagram? That do you pay trust. attention to any actual publications? Here, no. No. Why? Most of them are just comped invites. Um, mm-hmm. Even some that I'm friends with, I'll message later and say, hey, oh my God, you went here. I'm going to try it. They're like, skip it. Oh, yeah. But then. That's adorable. Right. So then I kind of, especially, like I said, the ones that I'm friends with. So I get the real answer. But I also understand better now, now that I think we've come, I think we've turned the corner in that kind of media dines where. Um, accounts, especially the ones that have been around longer, are actually now just, it's so easy. All you need to do is put partnership with, collaboration with, just a little snippet of, and then the diners for you to watch, read, and make mm-hmm. up their own opinion, right? But now they know that this was a collaboration or a partnership with whatever, Sexy Fish or whoever it was. Maybe, maybe it's just because I pay, I don't really pay attention, but I feel like I've seen less Maybe it's just me. Just more of this pay-to-play stuff. But I also You've don't... You've seen less of it? Yeah. But I also don't pay a ton of You're attention. You're probably paying less attention. <laughs> okay. Could, could I... To follow up on what you were saying about people that you're friends with at publication... I don't know how broadly we're talking about publications. Does that includes like... I don't um, know. Not publications. I'm talking like... Um, like these, network news and stuff like that or... No. Okay. The ones that post... The only... We don't... First of all, we don't really have... Our publications, and that's in the right. comillas, right. is is basically just press releases that say okay. this restaurant will have two hundred seats. It will have a brunch two okay. months after they open. Yeah, yeah, it they're just have. regurgitating. So press we really, releases. yeah, so very, we have very, very few follow up articles written right. about what was the experience like. Of because course, because on a Friday night. You want to know, hey, how how is this? And I could imagine as, as yeah, a yeah. diner, you're like scrolling, like, where is this? What is this experience like? Other than this restaurant will blah, blah, blah. So, with, I mean, without, so we, don't, we don't have any of that. So to answer yeah. your question, it's just what I'm talking about is accounts that have like 30, 40, 50,000 followers. Okay. And they're just doing the food porn thing. Yeah. And they do the whole... The cheese pull. Here's what you need to know. I went yeah. to this. So more like oh, casa, influencer, is, microblogger yeah, kind of stuff. type of stuff. This is how, how this is so what it was like to dine here. In and those, then they just put it. In those conversations, they, obviously you don't have to give like a specific person example, but like when you say, oh, you went to such and such a place and you had good things to say, maybe, and they tell you to skip it. Right. Does it ever come up like, oh, well, then why are you telling people that it's great? No, because I know what they're doing. I know they're getting paid. But that just doesn't come up in those conversations. Like no, they, you never hear them. It's I always under, wonder, like we've what, already had those conversations in yeah. the past. Okay. Where, and these so are what, people who are I was friends with maybe before they did they went that route. Yeah. And then they chose to take on the jobs to go photograph, and right. you know it's all good. And these people that I'm talking about do right partnership with. So again, the diner is yeah, aware yeah. that it's it's a paid right collaboration, mm-hmm. and so of course they're gonna say. This omakase. Okay, so great. yeah, these are people who are yeah, saying it's paid. They're just saying they're saying it's paid, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Have you seen like less pay for play stuff, or is it just? Me? I, I don't follow any of it, and right. I never, I never That's did. Probably because right. I, I don't follow any of any of it either. I also have a personal policy of I, I only follow people I actually know. He only and, started following me last year. Yeah, the minute we met in person, <laughs> even I followed though, him. Even though I've corresponded with him for I don't, like th- seven I have, years. I have a lot of hard lines that I take on these Weird. personal but the, I'm shocked that Nick has a lot of hard lines. I have to we say. Were, I, told, I, was, I actually told him when we met, I said, oh, hey, nice meeting you. Now I can follow snubbed, you on Instagram. He, he snubbed me. We were Oof. at Ariette. Wow. And he walked by me and no, I was like, hey, snubbed. like I'm all you know, friendly. I mean, hey, Nick, he, Nick he, is he, famous, man. He gets stopped all the time. He's like. Uh, yeah. I feel like I've heard your but voice already, before. It wasn't like, yeah. a, oh, I know you. for No, we've talked. But we in, had never met. Depth. So then he comes. He was he taking comes. something He's to the car. His position. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so he comes <laughs> back. He leaves because he was taking something to his car. He comes back. He goes, hey. No, yeah, I don't think I've ever, we've ever met. So we shake hands. Like, I'm just meeting him. And then he says, now I can follow you on Instagram. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you? 
This is you what happened. So me I, just... I was setting up for a podcast in the cave at area. No, I, <laughs> I'm not shocked. I'm just, you know. I was setting up for a podcast in the cave at area, right. and I'm walking by with a bin like of 60 my- pounds of gear over my shoulder. Mm-hmm. And she shouts at me from her table, hey, I don't know, it's a crowded restaurant. Everybody's saying hey to somebody. <laughs> So oh, I go Mr. and then VIP. and then no, but then I get to my car and I see the DM from you. Hey, you snubbed me, and then I thought, oh shit! And I That's right. ran back in, and I ran back into the restaurant because I would never just snub you. No, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure I just heard noise, and I thought it was I, he, other my, people my, in the my restaurant. My talking was noise. Wow. <laughs> How was the Michelin event in Chicago? <gasps> New York. New York. The new the last week. Yeah. Oh, it was it was great. Was it? It was really nice. I hope. Can you, can I you hope. summarize what it was for people who don't know what you're doing? So, yeah. So the Michelin Guide just for the first time ever combined New York, Chicago, and D.C. into one ceremony. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, so it was in New York. And I flew in for that. I was lucky to be invited. And it was great. It was, it was top notch. Very professional. I thought big, nice stage. I hope we get something like that. Doesn't I went to the to one in New York scale. last year. Oh, last year. I think I remember that. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it was cool. I, what, I hear the stage was better than last year's. Yeah, I mean, it was just New York. So, I mean, still a lot of, they have a lot of stars there. But it was, it definitely seemed like it was smaller. That, that was part, I was a little starstruck, but I was trying not to be that person. So, like, crew their, like, butt in, in line in front of me. Mm. To get in, everyone had to make, I'm like, oh, no big deal. Just get real crew their just butt in line in front of me. Like, I was going to be like, can I have a selfie? Yeah, they, uh, they, <laughs> still, really did cool. they do it in that? Um, it's like a hotel, like all the way at the rooftop. It's like crazy. It's no, this was year. at Spring Studios. Oh, it cool. In, so it sounds um, bigger. So yeah, the yeah. line to get in it was gorgeous weather. Um, they had three distinct spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, the first area had the step and repeat. They had these oversized Michelin guide books. Cool. Kind of like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Dope. Thing, take pictures, and then the second space had all the food, most of the food, and um. The third space was the actual event space, which was three times the size of all the other ones. Cool. I mean, it was it was. I mean, between pretty grand. those three places, that's a lot of stars. Yeah, yeah, just like casually, Keller's over there, you know, oh, grabbing a drink. He just, actually he, went. He went. Wow. He went. I'm he was actually on pretty stage. Mo- they were most there. Most most of them were there. Yeah, because last year when I went, he wasn't there. No. No. I was uh, like, I always just figure it's like Thomas Keller's like, oh, just another three star. It's fine. Whatever. <laughs> John George was in there. I love John George when he was in there. He's a legend. John George. I know. Former Pondcom podcast guest, John George. Um, any shocks from that list? Any disappointments? Um, I heard later that there were a bunch of places that lost. I'm not as in. I mean, I'm in tune with the, obviously the fine dining the stars, but mm-hmm. not the little places like the ones that like like our, for example, like our Fiola. That we would be like, right. why didn't Fiola get a star? Right. right. Where I didn't, I'm not as in tune there, but I was um, right next to David Fook. Um, oh. So excited. I've been whining for years. The, the shock in a good way that they finally got their second star. Yeah, I was good for him, so I was very aware of taping and not screaming <laughs> like I did with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was, I recorded that moment. That was like a good, a good shock. Good. And um, that was positive. David's a good dude. Yeah, nothing terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, that, from my perspective, anyway. Well, the, the the Brooklyn Fair has no stars now, right? They took them all away. Yeah, they I took was them wondering away. about that, and then I learned right well, before, before the awards. Before the they took them away before. They took them away before. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, Chef Caesar. Left. And by taking away, it just means they edited the guide to to remove them from the guide. Right. Right. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, the only shock is that Ryan didn't get his third. That was that was sad. I definitely thought he deserved yeah. a third. I feel like they're at this point they're going for consistency, meaning he needs to do it again and again. Maybe one more year, two more years. I don't uh, know at what point. I mean, he got he, the thing is he got his second star really quick. He did get a second star pretty fast. You know, he also won Chef of the Year, oh. Young Chef of the Year, which I told him like, yeah. you know, that's also pretty cool. He's on their radar. They're I just mean, gonna yeah. do the Michelin thing he's, and let him sweat it I'm out. I'm pretty sure he's the youngest two star. In the country or the world? Or? He's amazing. John, it was my number one Michelin dinner this year. I mean, it's been uh, my number one dinner uh, up there forever. Like, he, um, you know, they're just incredible. such a good group of people to mm-hmm. involved. It's not just that they're, like, really good at their job. They're just, like, incredibly 
good humans. And I love that, you know? They're the whole from, package. From Bresca to John, like just all like great people. And now they're coming to South Florida. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting soon. time for him. And I told just him. Just about a month to go. Oh, yeah. Um, Spoiler. <laughs> Let's not break the news for him. No, they already did. Oh, they did. Yeah. They did. Um, yeah, it's but not. Be it's Broward, so not everyone. It's going to be knows. interesting for to see. It's a big, much bigger space, though. That's what I hear. Than what he's used to. So, I mean, it's beautiful. Like all the pictures I've seen have been like, like the Four Seasons. They yeah. don't. They don't mess around. So, what are the some some of like uh, what. Well, one question. Have you eaten at Shingo yet? Not yet. Yeah, Not I'd yet. like to go It's on there. my list. High on my list. Yeah, he's pretty amazing. Um, There's so many omakasas to get to. <laughs> uh, so I was going to ask you, what are some of the meals, at least in South Florida, that you'd like to try that you haven't tried yet? Ooh, that's a great question. So, ooh. What? I don't understand. What's going on? Why are you looking at me like that? Um, okay, so I have, I'm going to Ortonique. Oh, the new Ortonique. Yeah, cool. I'm excited about that. Shingo's on my list. I want to try Secreto Omakase as well. Um, that's with Paul. I never know if it's Paul Key or Paul, Kui. Paul Key. Yeah, Key. Um, he's actually doing a thing where he's going to be heading it. Oh, that's good. This Right. Which oh, is, I think I saw him post about that. Yeah, so I've been Paul's kind of like waiting to Paul's like a very, very talented it. guy, so... Love him. I've always um, loved um, what's uh, the one at Los Fuegos? Um, at, um, I Diana. forget. I, um, I'm drawing a blank now. But I've so I've it's a it's very expensive the Secreto one. So I've kind of been waiting, but I'm thinking, oh, well, he's coming down. So now it's gonna right. have a hand at it. So definitely want. I think it's only four seats. Wow, I can't remember the last time I went to the restaurant that he has in. Oh my god, uh, Pow. Pow. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. I Pau. used to go. You know. Maybe like once or twice a year, but it's been, I don't know, to get down that way, it's a lot. So I used to love it, but it's been a long time. So I went there. When I used to go there, uh, Ben was still the chef there, Ben Murray. So when Ben left, I kind of stopped going for a while. Mm-hmm. And then I went back a few years later with friends and it was still still good. Yeah, good. So they still kept It's way better consistent. than Los Fuegos. I'm a, I'm a Los Fuegos fan, but yeah, it is better. <laughs> I agree. Just, I've never understood Los Fuegos at all. I never thought it was any good. I just like, and it's, I mean, you're paying like $25 for an empanada. I mean, that's, it's aggressive. Those empanadas are good. I don't care. <laughs> that is, I mean, way, way too much. Like, it's just, it's aggressive. But it I is. get it. The hotel that they're in, everything is gold plated and shit. I Even just, Larry like, likes it. He's Argentinian. Wow. I know. That, Who is that he? was pretty shocking. Who is he? I know. So, yeah, I don't know. I can't say that there's anything, uh, that I haven't been to, that I want to go to, other than Chingo, to be honest. Chingo's is high on my list. It's high on my list, too. But it's also like omakase I need to like mentally prepare myself for. It's a lot of food for me. I don't eat what a do lot. What do you mean it's a lot of food? It's a lot of... I like. I always leave those things like so full. It's like so much. Like when I did... So you never get the supplements? The supplement no, option? <laughs> never. Uh, I do. Like when I went to Sushi, sushi by, by Scratch. Scratch. Yeah. I actually haven't been to the one here. I just went to the one in Austin. Yeah. Uh, it was it was great. We had a great time. It was just it's like a lot of food, I'm just like rolling out of there. Same thing with pasta bar. If you haven't been there, on my list, it's when really, I have to really, travel there. It's yeah. really good. Um, you know. So, all right. Nick, you got anything else on your mind? Um, hmm. No, I think we. I, I don't know. I think we've covered a bunch of bases. I don't know. If there's stuff we haven't covered that you yeah want to talk about. No, this is your podcast. No, I'm good. I mean. Yeah. Love you guys. Love supporting you guys. Been listening to all the versions of Funko Podcast. That's crazy. There's been a lot of one. versions of this. You're right. <laughs> There's a I've lot of versions. There's been a lot of versions of this. Yeah, I've listened to them all pretty much. I would say maybe ninety percent of them. <laughs> one of twenty-two listeners that <laughs> listen right. to all. Yes. You and Noah. I wonder who the Noah. other twenty are. Huh. Who knows? Could be anybody. Could yeah. be anybody. I ran into somebody at a casino who said that they listened to the podcast. Wild. Yeah. Still shocked. People Noah needs to do a new song. That's right. There is a new one that I haven't, that I just haven't moved into this. Shocker. Noah's Abba. one of those friends who I've met on Instagram and is now. Yeah. Last time I saw Noah was here at uh, Chugs for that dinner we did with Hungry Post. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a time. I wanted to talk to you about that. Why? <laughs> Why? 
Go ahead, talk to me about it. Tell me. All this can be edited. So yeah, we could cut it out if it needs to get yeah. cut out. No, just I was surprised you did that, but as outspoken as you've been about these accounts and everything. Well, they paid me. Okay. I mean, that to me was like the, like, if you're going to take my restaurant at dinner time and you're going to put 50 people in it and pay us, then I'm okay with that. Okay. You know, and um, it's also an interesting combination because DoorDash is also our partner. Right. We noticed that because we were, we were studying the situation, Noah and I. So uh, DoorDash, that's, I mean, because to remove Uber Eats from here and to put in DoorDash, that was also an intriguing opportunity too which the person who actually got us with doordash is zach because they like he only uses doordash so like for them they've like hit this market super hard so i was okay also supporting doordash that they supported us and there was a credit card too which that one like i don't that one really didn't affect me that much uh but it was really the fact that it was a doordash event and it was paid and they paid well i was like Cool. I'm all about it. I mean, to be fair, like the Hungry Post, I I don't love them, but I don't hate them either. I actually think they did a really good job. I saw the, um, the event. Well, I saw your event. And then I've uh, been watching like following videos of the one they did at Beauty and the Butcher. And I've, right. I actually think, big on being fair, they've rocked it. So it looked beautiful. Well, just initially, I thought, you're doing an, an event with an influencer? I was like, but an and influencer also- account. I was like... That's well, weird. Hungry Post is actually an interesting perspective because the first person to ever write about Pig Inc. in 2012 was the Hungry Post. So I've known Andrea for, I don't know, 10 years. And, you know, it's also equally there's a bunch of shit that they've asked me to do that. I've been like, nah, I'm good. Super solid. But this one seemed like it's also, it depends on location, right? Like they wanted a Michelin star place. And I was like, this would never happen at Ariat. No chance. Chugs can happen there. You know, so Chug, people at, in Chugs for dinner time too. I'm all about that. So, you know, it's like, you know, you got to play it by ear too. I also think that they have a pretty solid following. They do. As opposed to, you know. No, they do. Whatever, like Mario from Hialeah or mm-hmm. Kendall that just started his food account and that wants a free meal. Like, nah, I'm super good. No, obviously they do. So, you know, I, I, I found it actually like pretty beneficial it's it also it it just varies from person to person i think you know and like publication to publication they've also sort of like become i haven't been aware of them long enough to know whether i would ever have put them in the influencer category right but it's almost become more of like a lifestyle brand i think like where where they seems like and i don't know enough but like where they thrive is Kind of like what you're saying, like lifestyle and events. Right. Because like the people that they had like running the event, they did a very good job. I was actually super happy with like how involved they were, the knowledge that they had, um, the information that they gave me, all that stuff I was pretty happy with. So, you know. It's like you chose a good one to do. I mean, out of all the ones that you could have done. Well, I think they're also the only ones that had like the... uh, the internal fortitude to ask me to do an event like that because I'll, I, we don't get asked to do events a lot because I say no to all of them. You know, it's like there's one, there's not enough time in the day Two, you know, we have a super small staff when it comes to like a leadership group. So to like pull them away from places, but you know, you're doing it in a location, you know, I, all that a stuff funny is good. conversation with Noah. It's oh, like, was it? Hey, you want to go? Well, he sends me the link. He's like, you want to go to this? I'm like, no, <laughs> I mean, Besides that, I go. It's not a novelty for me. I go to all these restaurants that they're doing these events all the time. Mm-hmm. I don't like collaborations anyway. I don't like pop ups. I don't. I mean, I do end up at a lot of them. Yeah. But no, no, I'm not. Gonna yeah. <laughs> I I actually I used. But then I looked closer and they. I felt they did a good job. I used that as an opportunity to the chef that we have here now. Uh, I like a lot, and that was his first opportunity to kind of take the lead because the last time we did an event here was with stephanie that was it yeah and it was great (laughs) and like i loved it and uh super happy to have created that relationship with her i think she's an amazing see collaborations i make exceptions for 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, she's an amazing chef and like a great human too. We've stayed friends. Uh, I just ate at Girl and the Goat actually in LA. Love it. it was, oh, in LA. Yeah, it was great. I haven't done that, that one. Really, really Chicago. enjoyed it. And um, I, I did everything for that. You know, me, but he wasn't the chef here yet. So he took over right after that. And I thought this was a good opportunity to like push him. Different type of food, uh, different style of food, a little more finesse, you know, a different leadership style, like the way you have to lead your team. Chugs is all about consistency and like making it delicious every day and consistent every day. That's totally different. You're doing stuff totally out of like that you've never done before. So it was good. I thought he did really well. And, um, you know, obviously things that he would need to work on, but those are building blocks to be better for the next time. I thought, and it was a paid event, so it helped. Yes. <laughs> so. Now you're the influencer. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> In so. collaboration with. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. You got a podcast and everything. Yeah, I know it's crazy. <laughs> you have a podcast. Pretty dang up Fridays, everybody. <laughs> oh I man, saw that. I saw yeah, Raka Chaka. That's right. Let's talk about Raka Chaka. Let's man. talk about Raka Chaka. Maybe we could. Maybe we'll, this could be uh, your your next field trip when you're done doing burgers with Seth. Okay. You can man. join us for Pretty Danga Fridays. Mm. I actually didn't love. My food, I liked Nick's way more. Yeah, it I was, think you're right. It was it was all a, just a touch too salty. Mine, oh. yeah, mine too a little bit. But I didn't, well, I didn't eat the whole, I didn't eat all yeah, your food. Yeah. I just had a bite. But that shit was really good. But I anyway, you guys the, were joking. I didn't realize you were really doing it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's a real thing. I was like, they're not really <laughs> doing so, that. It's a, it's a real thing. So the, it's so random. So, Frit <laughs> so Fritanga Fridays every Friday we will be posting content from a different Fritanga. These are for the uninitiated. These are the. Uh, cafeteria style Nicaraguan diners that are all over Miami. Uh, for me, it was a way to number one, get more food in the feed. We don't really have a lot of food in the feed. Okay. Number two, do it on a bank on podcast budget. <laughs> <laughs> and number What's a budget? <laughs> right. Yeah. I have zero budget. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I pretend. <laughs> and number three, have something like, force myself to regularly put stuff in there that's not Cuban because it's very easy to right. fall into that, you yeah. know, to yeah. like always be talking pastelitos and croquetas and, you know, so it's, it was just a way to, to make sure that there's. And that means more than. Right. So yeah. Yeah. at some point we'll get tired of that category and we'll shift it up, but I, I want to do at least a handful we'll do, of. Where you go to, um, I, don't, I think there might be one in Miami, La Hormiga de Oro. I mean, that's where that, I'll that be. That was actually where we were supposed to go, but then oh, we went yeah. somewhere that was okay. a little bit closer. That's, yeah, forward. that's by my house. Okay. I live like right. I could walk. But there's one in Pines. Oh, there's we, another Omega. We, we, wow. We they have more from. than one location. I wonder if it's a copycat. Wow. Or if it's like tiny. the same people. Yeah, this was pretty tiny. Super too. dumpy. This is like in, Super in a, dumpy. <laughs> yeah, this is like in a warehouse. This one's not quite dumpy, but they renovated recently. Yeah. We should so. just do takeout. No, I mean, no. You have to be at the Fritanga. I got I, I to gotta say, like, uh, Raga Chaka surprised me. It is definitely the cleanest Fritanga in <laughs> all of my It's very head. clean. That was like the review that they have yeah. on their website. But then the question becomes, like, for that kind of thing, like, do you prefer that? Like, the experience of eating a ragachaca, which is very clean, uh -huh. versus yambo, which is terrifying, yeah. but that's part of the charm. Yeah, I guess. I mean, time and I would eat at I would eat at both places. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, overall, man. I mean, I think I I enjoyed it. I recommend ragachaca. Yeah, ragachaca. I I recommend ragachaca and yambo. Sounds like a pitbull song. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you would know. You just went to the pitbull concert. Oh. That's right. <laughs> It, I went to see Ricky Martin. Yeah, no, I trust me. I I know. With a side of Pitbull and Enrique Iglesias. With yeah. a Unfortunately, side of. With a side of. How'd that never go? again. Why? Never what, was, again. what was the beef? I really dislike Enrique Iglesias. Sorry, guys, but not a fan. Why? And then he, I mean, he made, he made Pitbull sound good. <laughs> That's how bad know. it is. Mr. 305. Oh, God. No, what you oh, my God. I hope, I hope you get fine for that. I'm taking these damn headphones off. <laughs> Would you laugh? This is abuse. No. Oh, yeah, this is good. <laughs> this hey, is people abuse. love this guy's music. They all, the, the, they were going crazy. I'm like, am I the only one noticing that he's not singing? Yeah. <laughs> he's not singing. I followed your feed. Oh. I could tell it that oh, um, my God. he definitely wasn't singing. He can't sing. He can't dance. It's all computerized. And then all he kept doing was egging the audience on. He kept well, Ricky still looked like young Ricky. Stop it, Nick. <laughs> I'm going to unfollow you on Instagram. <laughs> all right. I think it's time for the wind down. Oh, here we go. Oh, <laughs> all right. That, I think ready that one song he, he said I'm, that song. I'm ready for the wind down. 
Right. Okay. This is where we do our wind down. Uh, we will start with parting recommendations. This is where we all recommend a thing or multiple things. It can be as many as you want. It could be a thing you read, a thing you ate, a place you went. doesn't matter as long as it's not your own thing because we will do shameless plugs mm-hmm. down the road. Mm-hmm. So, Brenda, you can go first or you can pass it off to give, us, uh, give yourself a little time. Well, as a Fancom podcast fan, I'm ready. Oof, Oof man, Oof. go for it. <laughs> I, um, I want to recommend, actually, this is, I don't know if you've heard about it. Um, it's called Fine Bread Podcast, another podcast. Oh, no. It's newish to me, it's been, but it's been around for a year. Um, oh, nice. It's actually, so Fine Bread Miami. Oh, nice. It's two Miami guys who are servers. They're in the industry, and they've together combined, they have like, I don't know, 14, 15 years, whatever, working. So it's their perspective from the server side. Oh, God. I so now I bring this. the diner side. You guys bring the restaurant What's it side. called again? It's called Fine Bread Miami. Okay. And they jokingly say pan de lujo. Yeah. But I, I don't always agree with everything they say, but it's just such a great raw content. Like they are often politi- very politically incorrect, mm-hmm. but I love it because they're just saying whatever the hell they want. And it's a reminder of a diner. Of I've, I've the seen these guys. person, yeah, the person, the, the servers, you know, so, the people behind who's serving you, you know, mm-hmm. and just to to be aware and just remember that someone could be having a bad day. But sure. but I mean, they just oh, they poke so much fun and they oh, I love it because they're just out there with their opinions, as I tend to be sometimes on. I'm Instagram intrigued. Stuff. It's a fancy bread. Fancy bread. Fancy bread. Miami. Yeah. Yeah. Fancy bread. My, you have piqued my interest. Ah. Yeah. So uh, they talk. They don't. Often, so one of the things I told, I told Larry I wanted to do is I want to find out where they work or one of them. And I want to go and I want to do everything they said, noise them. Oh, I love this. Like right off the bat. This is great. Just That's to like good. film them and the reaction. <laughs> like they said, like when people Can say, I get water with lemon and sugar on the side? They, they hit, well, can I have, yeah, can I have a, I don't even remember now. Yeah, things like that about being picky about the alcohol and sitting and moving your everything out from in front of you. Which yep. I've done, by the way. Oh, yeah? <laughs> He's like, I took hours like getting this dining room together, and you come and you move everything out of the way. <laughs> like, um, having your phone on the table, taking excessive pictures, um, asking um, if there's salmon on the menu, and clearly there's no salmon on the menu, and then wanting to know that. why. Do you guys have any salmon in the back? <laughs> why don't you have any? And why don't you have any salmon? So I said, I want to find out where they work, and I want to go in, and I want to do fresh is the bronze, all you know. those things. Yeah. Not. But they, they go all in. Cool. Um, oh, when people get mad about, um, you didn't do anything for my birthday. You didn't even bring me a cake. Yeah, that's good. They're like, how old are you, five? That's why do you really need good. A, why do you need <laughs> that's good. So that's one of the recommendations. And then the other one is a book, a favorite that I recommend like weekly, called Court Dork. Um, the writer is Bianca Bos- Bosker. <coughs> and she's basically not in the wine industry. She went to, in a nutshell, she went to a dinner once and there were two what she considered to be snobbish people talking about wine and how much knowledge and this guy was going to take a test. And she said, wait, you can take a test and um, you could pick out what wine is from what region, Mm -hmm. um, the vintage, everything just from smelling it and tasting it. And she piqued her interest. So she went into this world. She was like in the software industry. Oh, wow. She went into this world knowing nothing about wine, and she infiltrated all these tasting groups, like at 11 Madison Park, and at all these restaurants. And she started like a, a cellar rat, just like picking a box or whatever. And then she goes, I won't spoil it, but she goes all the way through taking a test and to pass. And it's a fascinating book. Was it called again? Cork Dork. Got I recommend it. it on audio because she just, again, very much like the, that podcast, she just says it yeah, how she cool. wants. Um, it's pretty cool. And Love then you that. do learn on, on the um, as you listen, you learn a lot about wine. Mm-hmm. But it takes to get to that level, and why it's important to those people that do get like master psalms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How how hard that is. Interesting. Those so are my two recommendations. Uh, show. I just finished watching this limited series called Godless. Um, it's very good. It's a western. Uh, I won't get too much into detail, but the Cliff Notes, it's a small mining town. There's a 
huge tragedy. All the men die. And it's just now these women that run this town. And then there's an outlaw. And then there's an, a bunch of outlaw renegades. It's interesting and fun to watch. Really, the acting and the writing was pretty awesome. Um, the only actor that people would know is Jeff Daniels, I think. He's awesome and crushes it. So that was really entertaining. Book, um, you know, I've worked through like maybe like 35% of the Andrew Friedman, the dish book. I recommend it. It's really good. Um, I think for a lot of chefs, they'll have like a little bit of PTSD on like how intense we work to like really source ingredients and work through menu ideas and stuff. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, and it's not a recommendation, but I'm pumped for uh, Andre 3000's new album that's coming out, that it's nothing but instrumentals of a flute. And I'm looking forward to what this crazy person has created. That sounds super interesting. Yeah, I mean, he's an interesting guy. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been like something like 20 years or something that he's uh, dropped an album and he decides to drop an album of just instrumentals of a flute yeah. and I'm like god it's just so like man it's good yeah. it's good because people are going to buy it people yeah. are going to listen to it too so I'm pretty pumped <laughs> uh, I'll recommend a product and then I have a sort of loose vague recommendation that comes with a story Okay, it's not really a product show I started watching the second season of Invincible which Peter Santamaria recommended the first season when he first came on Invincible is a, a animated series on Amazon uh, that's sort of like adult themes, kind of gory-ish, but it's like a call it like a dark superhero comedy uh, based on a, a comic book series. I'm not a big comic books person, but this was actually like very well done. The cast is super solid. Steven Yun from uh, Walking Dead is in the lead role, uh, and a bunch of other people. So. So far, so good on season two of that. The second one, it's just sort of a, and I haven't told you these stories yet. I think you'd enjoy it. So it's just like a combination of learn how to be and teach your children how to be in places. Because mm. this past week, I had a couple of interesting <laughs> interactions at a casino. Oh. So kids, there were kids at a casino? No, but young enough that when they were children, oh, they should have. They were not taught how to be. Okay. So, no le entraron a chacletazos. Right, exactly. So right. I'm at a vecino, and I see a white bucket, like you might get at a hardware store or something, outside of the front door, just sitting there. So I walk over and check it out. There's a bunch of like dirty paper towels in it. So I come back inside and ask uh, one of our bartenders if she knows anything about it. And she tells me, oh, I think that's one of these guys, some group of three guys sitting at the bar, early to mid-20s. So I say, hey, uh, I'm told that might be one of your buckets. Anybody know anything about this bucket? And one of these guys says, oh, yeah, man, you know, I was, uh, I was fishing earlier, and I just didn't have anywhere, like, to put the bucket with all the paper towel from when I was cleaning all the wahoo that we caught. So I just left it out there, and I lost my mind. <laughs> so I tell this kid, yeah, I take a second to process it, and I tell him, basically, on what fucking planet? Does it make sense to leave a bucket outside of a place? Go out and throw it away. And he goes, oh, okay, okay. And so I'm sitting there waiting for him to move, and he doesn't move. And he goes, oh, like right now? And I go, are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> Did it smell like fish? It smelled pretty fishy. Yeah. It smelled pretty fishy. And I told him, oh, are you crazy? You like, How do you go to a business and leave a literal bucket of your fish trash outside the front door of a bar? Are you out yeah. of your mind? So he goes outside, he's looking around for a, for a garbage can, and he doesn't see one in the immediate vicinity. So he, like, starts to put it back down. And I go, no, all the way over there. <laughs> and I point him to the end of the block. Like, that's where the garbage is that you need to go to right now. And then on the... So he leaves. He doesn't take his bucket. Because I told him, like, leave it in a discreet place that people don't see. His two buddies stay longer. They're leaving. And I pick up the bucket. I follow them out. I pick up the bucket. And I hold it up, and one of them tells the, uh, their, the friend, hey, dog, get this bucket. No, I'm not going to take the bucket. And I yell at both of them, one of you is taking this fucking bucket. <laughs> He's like, get off my 
Come man. on. God, I wish this oh, was on man. film. So then the other interaction. Do you have security that, cameras with audio? Uh, probably. I don't know I, if there's audio involved. but Yeah. Yeah. The other interaction that I had was with this guy who was spouting all kinds of gibberish at the bar. And like, actually, like gibberish about like, Deme hacerte una pregunta. You know, all this in Spanish. You know, when you're smoking a cigar and the cigar just explodes with flavor and it's flowering and this and that. Like, do you know, like none of what he was saying made any sense. I'm like attempting a conversation. It's going nowhere. I just kind of walk away at some point. Then he calls me over again. I have a cigar in my mouth. And he tells me, dame la mano, dame la mano para decirte algo. So I give him my hand like we're going to shake hands. He takes my right hand in his right hand. And then he puts his other hand like over my shoulder. So now we're like side by side and he's got a whole arm around my shoulders. And then he lets go of my hand and starts trying to take the cigar out of my mouth for some reason. And I'm keeping the cigar in my mouth and I'm telling him, suéltame tabaco. Suéltame. And I tell him like five times, suéltame tabaco. And he goes, no, 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 si no hay que llamar a la policía. And I told him, te prometo que esto lo, lo vamos a resolver sin llamar a ningún policía. <laughs> oh, man, Nick, you had an intense wow. weekend, man. I think he needs a break. And he like yeah. backed off. But it's like, what is it? You can't just go around grabbing people's taquitos. Yeah, well, you know? that sounds... Uh, yeah, in all every sense of the word. But starting with a cigar. Like, what are you doing? So all this is to say, like, there are too many people in the world who haven't been taught how to be. You got to learn how to be. And you got to teach your kids how to be because they're going to grow up to not be kids that don't know how to man, be. Man, what? This could be a segment. Oh, man. Every week. People, people who don't know how to be. Yeah. This could be a segment every week with you. Yeah. Well, I think it's time for all we do. Yep. yep. Uh, well, no. Uh, uh, shameless plugs. Oh, right. That thing. Brenda, tell the people where yeah. they can find all your things. All my things. Um, conveniently. Oh, so, oh yeah. sorry. Yeah, go. Sorry. Everything is at the wet palette, and that's W H E T P A L E T T E. Yes, I am aware that it's palette. It's misspelled, but it's not misspelled because my logo is a palette, a painter's palette. It's a play on words, people. Did that come from somewhere? Or? Oh, you know how many people are, do you realize you misspelled palette? I'm like, do you realize you haven't seen my logo? Yeah. <laughs> like, Shut up. Was there a reason for the, for the painting palette? So, yeah. So, it's the logo has a fork, a wine glass, uh, and a paintbrush. And the brush was, I have an, I'm a former interior designer. So, the painter's brush came well the whole concept of palette came from that the color or just palette and then in the concept of palette many colors many things the paintbrush is there as a placeholder for anything else i want to talk about on the blog so mm. travel shows you know it's not just the fork food wine and whatever yeah, it's else. more like you know it gives you openness to do whatever yes so the web palette.com it's the blog where i write um occasionally although i've been doing more podcast episodes lately but i do have a rotating favorites list so the answer to what are your some of your favorite restaurants that's there and i update that monthly and that's in alphabetical order it's not ranked it's just all sorts of places it doesn't have to be fine dining it's just my favorite places to dine um the list for my annual restaurants my top restaurants of the year and i also have a south florida very popular page a south florida corkage page um, and other tidbits and stuff. But everything's at the web palette, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Um, what else is there? Whatever else. There's YouTube. I'm on all of it. All the things. <laughs> all the things. Mike? Literally. Go ahead. Hit it. All the things. I still got to recommend all my shit. I mean, we've, been, we've done this 80 times already. All the, the things. All the, the things. Arietta Nave. Scapegoat and the Taurus. Chugs and the Gibson, all the things. All the things. At this point, just yeah. all the things. Big in the Powell, Scoops and Laurel, Miami against the world, all the things. All the things. Insert song. All the, the things. All the things. All the, the things. And finally, you can find Bang Kong Podcast on all the social media things at Bang Kong Podcast. Like a podcast sandwich, give us all your money at patreon.com slash datamag, D-A-D-E-M-A-G. And also subscribe. If you're not subscribed, if somehow you came across this and you're not subscribed, subscribe wherever you subscribe to things on YouTube, on your podcast mm -hmm. thing, all that stuff, uh, so that you make sure you see new episodes as they come. Also, if you're not watching on YouTube, check it out on YouTube. You see facial expressions, you see... You know, an occasional Petey the dog. There's all kinds of interesting stuff yep. happening. 
Yep. The real all-star here. Yeah. And with that, you want to do a lightning round or? No, no, I can't. I have to okay, go cool. back. So with that, no <laughs> lightning round today. Thank you very much, Brenda, for joining us, uh, coming all the way from the wet pallet land. I know. It's far. Yeah. yeah. Long drive. Really it's appreciate far. it. Uh, and that's it. Until next time. Thank Peace. you for having me. Yes. Music. We did it. We did it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.